I'm Sheila Long O'Mara with Furniture Today. Welcome to this edition of Betting Insights. I am with Bob Navoyich, the CEO of Gold Bond Mattress in Hartford, Connecticut. Hey, Bob. How are you? I'm great. Thank you for joining me. You guys are celebrating your 125th anniversary this year. Yes, very exciting. Uh, it's a long time and uh, it's a testament to our employees and our customers and our vendors. And that's why we're here. That's pretty phenomenal. So when I was thinking back, 1899, you saw the turn of the century. You saw a war. You saw the Great Depression. You saw another war. And everything that came after that, that's a lot of history to weather. Um, those times are usually pretty tricky on businesses, but you guys managed to survive. So what were some of the secrets that kept you going for 125 years? I think the most important thing is relationships with our customers. I mean, we are very much involved with our customers, available for our customers and our employees. I mean, I'm on the factory floor all the time. I was on the factory floor this morning. We have a new employee and his job was to pick up a springs and put it on the line and he couldn't really pick it up right and all of that. And I'm walking by. So I, I picked up and put it on there. He was like almost shaking. He thought he did something wrong that I had to help him. I said, it's okay. Hey, it's okay. I'm here to help you. This is a family business. Don't worry. You'll get the hang of it. So he was so now when he walks, when I walk by him, he goes out of his way. He's so happy. He was scared. He was literally scared. That's not the type of environment we have out there. You know, we have probably nine of the 53 employees are related. We have uh, mothers and sons and uh, sisters and brothers. And that's, that's what it is. And, and we take care of them. You know, many, many stories about that. I'll just tell you one. We had very important person is our head quilter. And he had a brother who had a serious injury and he couldn't go see him in Florida. And, and you could tell he was upset all day long, almost in tears. And I said, what's the matter? He said, you know, it's very expensive and I want to bring my whole family. And I said, that's your issue. Don't worry. I spent my life flying. I have enough miles. You can fly around the globe five times. So, of course, we bought him a ticket or the same thing. You know, many since it's a very Hispanic community, many of our employees are of uh, Puerto Rican origin and they have older family members in Puerto Rico. And they're not coming. A mother was 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 died. And, and you know, we heard about it. I went and saw him. And I said, when is the funeral? He said, in three, four days. I said, oh, OK, so whatever time you need off. He said, I can't go. I said, why? He said, it's expensive to fly to Puerto Rico. It's in the it's winter time. I said, okay, I'll, I, that's not the problem. You go and you be with your family and and you know honor your mom. So I mean, we do that all the time. Or somebody's car breaks down. You know, to take a bus from some of the places around here is not oh, yeah. convenient and straight. And so we lend him money to fix his car. We lend him money for a down payment. We do that. I mean, it comes back, you know, tenfold in loyalty. And, you know, some of these people, when, when we're really busy in the summer, because we do a lot of college business, which is basically over a 90 day period. And we say, you know, we got to work Saturday, you got a long day, so we're going to start at six, you're going to be to whatever it takes. And they're happy to because they know when they need something or ask for something, we're there for them. And that that's, that's the most important part of the business is our relationship with our employees, um, and our customers. Well, in that relationship with your yeah, and that relationship with your employees, that's not something that just started happening when the third generation took over. That's something, that's a legacy that's always been building for all of these years. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, I remember my uncle when I was when I was in my 20s, my uncle, because the business was uh, although my dad was the youngest in his family, his uh, brother was 17 years older. I remember, and he was sort of a rough old guy, and he was out there yelling at everybody, but they'd give him a hug after he finished yelling at him. I mean, they they just loved him. Um, usually had a cigar in his mouth, not lit. And uh, so it's a lot, of, a lot of unique relationships. So we were talking a little bit before we we went online about your grandfather, Isidore, immigrated from Ukraine and landed in um, Connecticut. And, and that's where the company has always stayed within that one little circle. The first factory that, that Gold Bond started manufacturing in was a three-story factory, yep. which sounds like a nightmare to me, but you said there were some fun things about that factory when you were a little boy. 
Well, the quilting operation and sewing was on the third floor, and there was slides that went down to the second and the first floor. So I'm a little kid. I see a slide. So that's what I would do, you know, slide down it. But it was sort of, it was an old brick, just what one would think of as an old brick three-story building where there was a factory. And it was just cool. It wasn't an elevator. So you had to walk up the stairs. I mean, there was an elevator or the slides to get raw material or finished product. You know, it was uh, it was unique, you know, and it wouldn't obviously be capable of producing mattresses in there today, but that's where we started. Um, and I think that was until about uh, 1960. Um, and then we were in another building, always in Hartford. Hartford's the capital of Connecticut. That's where our family lived, and that's why we wanted to be here, and that's where our employees are all from. Uh, now there may be from other towns surrounding it, but no, it's uh, so this is our third factory. Um, Very and this, cool. we've been here for 37 years, I think, something like that. Very cool. So now we have the third generation yourself and the fourth generation and Skip, who's the president of Gold Bond. Um, what are you guys doing to position the company for the next generation of leaders in the Dumboychek family to take it over and sustain it? They're all pretty young. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so, and the only thing they like when they come, like Skip's girls or my daughter's kids or, or even my son's, they just like jumping on the mattresses in the showroom. And I don't think they think they're thinking of that. Uh, I don't know. They're way too young to be thinking what they're going to do when they're older. So, um, you know, they know it's here. And like my youngest son, Skip's little brother, he's the youngest of the three. You know, he was a, you know, finance major. He went to Babson, a great entrepreneurial business school. He worked one summer. I don't think he lasted a day. He just was not the type of kid that said, I'm not going to sit here in a hundred degree heat uh, and load trucks. That's not what I want. And so, you know, he's very successful uh, with Bank of America has a very, very good position. And he's a kid and he likes it. So as long as they're happy, they can support their family. That's what's important. Uh, very cool. So, but the growth trajectory for Gold Bond is still very positive and you guys are headed in the right direction and, and you know, digging in for the future. Yeah, we, we need to be able to be receptive to the needs of our customers, and we are, and that goes to the relationship with our vendors. I mean, we have wonderful relationship with Ligon and Platt, you know, the, the gentleman that handles uh, the Eastern U.S. and the Spring Division, I've known forever, um, and I talk to him all the time, and we're always striving to what is the better spring? What's the What can we make things better? And that's what they want to do, because some of their better springs, you know, are more coils, more expensive and unique and different. And we're the first to embrace it because um, we want our products the last 15 plus years, not the five to seven that the most in the industry want. We don't make one-sided mattresses. We don't make foam in case of mattresses. We make two-sided edge to edge steel. All of our FR material that's in the cool package has wool in it. Um, anything we can do to make it better. And that's why the hospitality trade, whether it's schools, you know, all the colleges in the Northeast, all the prep schools in the Northeast, you know, they're buying our more I believe 36 by 80 is the size of the door mattress, whether it's in green vinyl or blue nylon. We don't use foam in it, so it's more natural. We use cotton. It also reduces our price versus the foam. So we're very competitive on these bids for the colleges. I remember when a long time ago, my dad had the state of New York contract, uh, the dormitory authority. That was like 4,000 mattresses from June to August, which was almost impossible. And we we did not bid on that the last 10 or 15 years because you, you just, we can't do that. Yeah, that'll um, take over a factory real fast, right? Yeah. But we, but we also do a lot with hotels because, again, the same thing. They want comfort and longevity, and we give them that longevity. I mean, we have stories. Two of the biggest hotels in the United States are the casinos in Connecticut, Foxwoods and Mohegan Sun. And they were unhappy with the vendor they had. And the mattresses lasted seven years, and we nurtured the relationship through um, – through the company we work with, Mattress Concierge, um, that specializes in that. And we make all the products for that company. And they're now uh, 13 years old, and there's nothing wrong with them. 
The only time they sometimes need something that might have gotten destroyed in the room, because who the heck knows what happens in some of those rooms? You know, one <laughs> college kid checks in and 25 more show up later in the day. But no, and they're they're all happy. And we had a recently a hotel in Houston, Texas, that heard of our mattresses from other hotel owners they know when they wanted them. And I said, we're happy to sell you, but that's pretty far away freight-wise. It's a $4,000 truck, and you're going to have to bear, you know, most of that cost. And they they said, oh, we think it's worth it. And they're tickled pink. And that's all over the place. Uh, wow. Florida. That yeah. diversification has kind of helped navigate some tricky economic waters, I'm sure. Yep. Um, and so the futons, we still make futons. Futons are still out there. You know, we're one of the market leaders in it. It's not what furniture today called eight, nine years ago, $2 billion industry, but it's probably, it's still very viable. We sell some major retails, truckloads, every 60 days, uh, rooms to go in the South, uh, they have four ship two points, or three ship two points, we sell full truckloads of one item every 90 days, like clockwork, and we have many, uh, many others like that. Wow, uh, that's a good little add-on business, not necessarily add-on business, but a diversification of, you know, traditional residential mattresses. But what we really um, excel in is using the newest, best technologies and spring systems and producing wonderful high quality products. We have a great Beckart white rayon fabric that looks like a wedding dress. And we have uh, 5,280 coils in that mattress using Liggett's high-end. Uh, it's a coil they didn't make for anybody else. It, it's 1,950 coils. And when you add the nano on each side, and it's just wow. I mean, every single person, when you look at it, it's wow. And then when you try it, it's a six number line. And we use other polymers. We use latex in the upholstery. We use uh, um, from uh, Carpenter. We use high end foams from them and we use uh, other high end foams. So, and it's, it's, it's beautiful and looks good. And, you know, we have some of the customers because again, we're care about what the customer thinks sometimes they, even if they're wrong they didn't like the look they said that's old school i said okay so we had to develop a whole line for this wonderful account and you know work with our vendors to get a very high-end product that looked as high-end but it wasn't white and it wasn't rayon so they're sort of old school but you know and i'm going up there that's all through maine and the next couple of weeks ago train them on this new line we did for them and they wanted a different type of handle and this so most companies wouldn't do that and but we made the special line for them um, that, that's, that's kind of cool one. and i do like the fact that you you're a self-proclaimed road warrior right you're you're going to your um retail partner stores doing the training yourself so that um, with my salesman with yeah. our salesman yeah. i make them sit there listen they participate but every time they learn something too because they're never going to know what i know they've just not been doing it at the level and they're not in the factory all the time very cool. Very cool. I think we're out of time, but we could spend like another hour talking if we we could just do the Bob and Sheila show. I think. <laughs> yeah, well, thank you very much. Um, Absolutely. Again, I'm Sheila Long O'Mara speaking with Bob Nagoyacek of Goldbach Matters.